Welcome. This is a Z Academy, a place where you can learn about topics in machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence. Latent Spaces Part 3 A Practical Introduction to Deep Convolutional Generative Adversarial Network. In the previous lesson, we learned about variation AL autoencoders and their implementation in TensorFlow. In this lesson, we shall explore another deep learning architecture called Generative Adversarial Network. More specifically, you will learn what is a DC GAN, how to build a DC GAN model in Python, how to use it to generate new images, how to explore the latent space using the built model. Deep Convolutional Generative Adversarial Network the term GAN was first introduced by Ian Goodfellow in his paper in 2014. It was a drastically different architecture compared to the ones already established in the field, for example, CNN, FCNN, and RCNN, etc. The idea quickly gained widespread adoption, and since then hundreds of various flavors and variations have been introduced. This is considered a breakthrough in deep learning field by many, and is still an active area of research. A typical GAN architecture consists of two main components, a generator network and a discriminator network. The generator network is trained to generate images from random noise sampled from Gaussian distribution while discriminator is a classification network which is trained to classify whether an input image is real or a fake image. The generator tries to fool the discriminator in thinking that the image is real while the discriminator tries to get better at classifying real versus fake image. Both the generator and the discriminator networks, after several iterations on the training set, learn the probability distribution of the given data. The original GAN architecture didn't have convolution layers and was rather a fully connected network, however, a further development led to the Deep Convolutional Generative Adversarial Network, DC-GAN, which consisted of convolutions as well as fully connected layers. An example architecture of such a DC-GAN can be seen in this figure. Let's look at the loss function computation. A GAN network, like any other deep learning architecture, tries to optimize an objective function. There are as many GAN objective functions as there are different variations of GANs. A general DC GAN uses a loss function which is a combined loss of two different networks. The loss function consists of two energy functions, the loss of the generator network and the loss of the discriminator network. The discriminator tries to minimize the loss while generator tries to maximize it. This mini-max strategy is expected to lead to a network convergence. More specifically, the discriminator network has two loss terms, the loss on real images and the loss on generated images. The loss on real images is computed by taking the expected output of the network to be 1, and loss on fake images is computed by taking the expected output of the discriminator network to be 0. The generator loss is computed by computing the output of the discriminator on the generated images. The expected output of the discriminator is taken to be 1 and weights of the generator network is updated while keeping the weights of the discriminator network constant. Implementation The implementation process is similar to our previous lessons, so if you would like to know more about the process, you can check out the other lessons in the series. We use Python 3 and TensorFlow to on ACUDA enable GPU. For this lesson, we would use an open source image data set which consists of images of bicycles. The data set consists of 4K images of bicycles. We load and pre process the images. More specifically, we use TensorFlow's data loader method to load the images from an input directory. We then raise size and normalize each image. An example set of images are shown here in this figure. Now let's build the model. We will construct a DC GAN model in this section. As explained earlier, 
A DC GAN consists of two parts, a generator network and a discriminator network. We shall build both consecutively. A generator network takes an input latent vector Z, sampled from random Gaussian noise, and outputs a color image. Therefore, the first layer of the network is of size of latent dimension. As in the original paper of DC GAN, we use a latent vector of 100 dimensions. The output layer is a color image of size 128 by 128 by 3. The number of middle layers of the network depend on the image size, that is, the bigger the image, the larger is the network. Therefore, it is important to keep the image size small or have a better GPU with larger memory and processing power to handle the workload. The construction of generator is shown in this figure. Each middle layer block of the network consists of three layers, that is inverse convolution, batch normalization, and a ReLU activation function. These blocks are repeated until half of the image size is achieved. Thereafter, an inverse convolution layer with tangent hyperbolic activation is placed to recover the original color image. The importance of having batch normalization cannot be stressed enough here. Since GANs are adversarial networks, it makes them highly unstable, and it is strongly advised to use batch normalization for each step in the training that is normalizing the data in each mini-batch with the mean and variance of the respective batch. There are multiple improvements at this stage, and one could expect to improve performance of the network by introducing better normalization methods. However, in this tutorial, we shall only focus on the basic construction of a DC GAN, therefore, we shall use to debatch normalization for every middle layer of the network. The code block for a generator looks like this. We first create a custom layer function which generates a layer block consisting of a set of layers. More specifically, each custom layer block consists of an inverse convolution layer and a batch normalization layer. A dropout layer is also added in order to add regularization and avoid overfitting. We generate the complete network by this make generator function. We first add an input layer for an input of a 100 dimensional vector. Then we add a layer stack in the form of a Python list. First item in the list is a dense layer of size 8 by 8 by 256. Then we add for custom layer blocks by adding the general layer function for times. After the layer block, we add a last inverse convolution layer with a tangent hyperbolic activation function. This is the layer which would generate the final generated image. The discriminator is constructed in the similar way as the generator, however, the layers are constructed differently. A discriminator is a classification network which takes a color image as an input and outputs a probability value. Therefore, an input layer of the network is a 128 by 128 by 3, and output layer is a sigmoid function which results in a probability, depicting whether the image is real or a fake image. The construction of the network is shown in this figure. Just like the generator, the middle layers consists of blocks of layers. Each middle layer block has a 2D convolution layer, a batch normalization layer, and a leaky ReLU activation function. The data has been normalized between minus 1 and 1. It is observed in the experiments that using leaky ReLU helps the network generalize better. The number of middle blocks depend on the size of the image and are repeated until image reached a small enough size, for example, 8 by 8 with 512 filters. Then the output is flattened, and is connected to a dense fully connected layer. The dense layer uses sigmoid activation function, therefore, it generates the probability of the input image for being real. The code block for discriminator function looks like this. First, we construct an input layer of same size as that of an image. Then we add for 2D convolution layers. Each convolution layer is followed by a batch normalization layer and a leaky ReLU activation function. After the convolution block, we flatten the output and then add a dense layer with sigmoid activation function. This is the output layer which gives the probability of whether an input image is real or a fake image. 
the generator loss is computed on adversarial network which depends on the output of both the generator and the discriminator a combined network is obtained by joining both the generator and the discriminator networks this results in an adversarial network which takes latent noise vector as an input and outputs the classification probability of real versus fake note that the discriminator layers are marked as untrainable in such a network as the aim is to obtain the classification for the generator's output with a pre-trained discriminator network now let's train the model the training of the GANs consists of individual trainings of both the discriminator and the generator since there are two terms in the loss function so the discriminator has to be trained for each loss. The generator requires the output of a trained discriminator. Therefore, generator and discriminator are trained alternatively. At each training step, first discriminator is trained and then once the discriminator has been trained, it is used as a classifier in a combined adversarial network. The combined adversarial network has training turned off on the discriminator layers. Here you can see the code of a training step Pause the video and see if you understand it. Let's look at the results now. These are some of the images randomly sampled from the latent space. More specifically, if we generate a random mean and variance vector and then pass it to the decoder of the network, then it generates images as shown here in this figure. If you have followed our lesson on Variation Al Autoencoders, then you would recall that we explored a powerful feature of latent spaces, which is the ability to generate the new images by traversing the latent space. Since GANs are also a way to project the data into latent space, we can do the same with the GANs as well. More specifically, we can take to random noise vectors and generate intermediate images by interpolating between them in the latent space. The result of such interpolation can look something like this in this figure. This concludes the lesson. You should have learned by now how to construct a deep convolutional generative adversarial network, how to use a DCGAN to generate new images, how to generate new images by random sampling, how to explore the latent space by interpolation. Thanks for watching the video. I hope that you have learned the concepts in this video and it would improve your understanding and knowledge. Feel free to post your question in the comment section below. If you find this content useful, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel.